गुड आफ्टरनून एवरी वन माई सेल्फ सी राज चावला वाइस चेयरमैन एम एस एम इन स्टार्टअप कमेटी ऑफ आई सी आई वेलकम यू ऑल इन दिस टूडे वेबिनार ऑन रिकवरी अंडर एम एस एम ई एज वी ऑल नो दिस इज ए वेरी बिग प्रोफेशनल अपॉर्चुनिटी फॉर ऑल आवर चार्टर्ड अकाउंटेंट्स एंड प्रोफेशनल दैट हाउ वी कैन रिकवर द पेमेंट विच इज ओवर ड्यू विच इज ए डिलेड पेमेंट so today we have with us c a manoj lamba ji a very prominent chartered accountant and expert in msme and startup he will guide us that how we can use the msme portal that is msme samadhan there this we can file the complaint and procedure and how it can be used for the recovery of payments pending of msme so government has given this very important tool platform for the msme to recover their delayed payments as we all know last year on 1st of february 2023 our finance minister came with new amendment in income tax act that is 43 bh that if any sum of amount is pending which is payable to msme and that is delayed by 15 days and if there is any agreement in that case that can be delayed up to 45 days and as if it is a delayed and it is not given by the party then in that case that amount will not be allowable expenditure under, under income tax act it will be allowable only in the year in which it, it is paid so this is a income tax point of view on the other hand government is supporting that if it is your delayed payment the party is not making payment to you to the msme in that case msme ministry has created a portal msme samadhan where you can file your lodge your complaint for the recovery of the payment and if the pay amount of uh, your due amount is up to 20 lakh in that case district level councils are there if the pending amount is more than 20 lakh in that case state level councils are there so our guest faculty c a manoj lamba ji will explain us how we can proceed for the recovery of this payment so over to our coordinator please thank you so much raj sir good afternoon one and all present here it is my honor to introduce our esteemed speaker today ca manoj lamba ji with over 24 25 years of experience in auditing income tax and company law mr manoj has established himself as a leading authority in his field he is the co-founder of biskyan private limited a recognized startup and a registered mentor on the startup india government portal manoj sir's dedication to the accounting profession is evident through his enduring association with the ICI Institute of Chartered Accountants of India since 1999 mentoring over 10000 students and delivering more than 500 seminars and webinars across India his contribution to lit literature are noteworthy with three insightful books to his name including a guide on gst for university students and an ebook on vivad se vishwas a familiar face on financial channels like aaj tak and money nine Mr Manoj regularly contributes to tax related discussions bringing complex topics to the masses with clarity his youtube channel tax ki paatshala further amplifies his impact on entre entrepreneurial education making tax knowledge accessible to broader audience today we are privileged to gain insights from seasoned chartered accountant whose influence extends nationwide empowering startups msmes and the broader business community Without further ado, I invite C. M. Manoj sir to take the charge of the meeting and lead us to the insightful session. Manoj sir, thank you so much, Divyam ji, and very good afternoon to everyone who is attending this webinar through this M. S. M. in Startup Committee of I. C. I. And my special thanks to the chairman and vice chairman of the committee who had provided me an opportunity to share my views. on a very hot and burning topic you can say of msme recovery mechanism 
तो फ्रेंड्स बिफोर आई स्टार्ट माई डेलीब्रेशन आई वॉन्ट टू टच लिटल बिट ऑफ ओन एम एस एम ई डी एक्ट फ्रेंड्स दिस माइक्रो स्मॉल एंड मीडियम इंटरप्राइजेस डेवलपमेंट एक्ट इज पास बाई दार्लियामेंट इन टू थाउजेंड सिक्स इन टू थाउजेंड सिक्स एंड दिस इज अ स्पेशल एक्ट इन एक्टेड बाई देंट्रल गवर्नमेंट फॉर द डिवेलपमेंट प्रोटेक्शन and promotion of msme this is not a penalizing act this is not a compliance act this is a special act for the protection and growth of msme d there is nothing which is going to penalize you this act provides you a plethora of schemes through which you can avail so many benefits there are thousands of scheme from the government of india central as well as state government through which you can enjoy many benefits father our honorable prime minister shri narendra modi ji is talking about viksit bharat by 2047 viksit bharat by 2047 dream comes true only when we will strengthen our msmed until we will provide some kind of facilities some kind of benefits some kind of protection to our micro and small industry these dreams can never be true there is just some hard facts about the that nearly 45% of indian export nearly 45% of indian export comes only from micro and small enterprises if we are talking about indian gdp nearly one third of indian gdp constitutes of msme only if i talking about the total constitution total contribution of msme in indian economy 90% of total indian industries constitutes of this msme this msme is growing so fast ki without that we cannot survive in covid duration we can see that when there is a lockdown announced by our honorable prime minister ji on 20th march 2020 the entire world is huing and crying they are, they didn't have funds to pay the electricity bill they didn't have pay money to pay the labor they didn't have money to purchase the raw material everyone is stuck then the government realized our economy the our bharat economy our indian economy is based on the foundation of micro and small enterprise that's why that's why the government is taking newer and new steps every day for the protection and development of the msme industry friends for the today's discussion the topic assigned to me is msme recovery mechanism the title for the today's discussion is revenue rebound revenue rebound a msme recovery mechanism my dear friends in today's time our msmes is facing a hardship to purchase raw material and pay their day to day expenses just because of late payment from their debtors they are unable to recover the dues from the debtors that's why this important law is introduced by the government for recovery of msme dues because the government is in their support now the government is in their support now we will discuss chapter 5 of msme d act with you i am sharing my screen with you is my screen is properly yes. visible dibham ji yes yes it's visible sir visible but uh, yes sir you can maximize it maximize it 
जीत परफेक्ट ना नो नो नॉट दिस वे एफ एन एफ फाइव सर जूम आउट मतलब प्रेजेंटेशन पे जाऊँ इफ यू एफ एन एफ फाइव जावे ने बड़ी हेल्प करो जावे इज इट फिजिबल नो इट्स या इट्स बट इट्स नॉट फुल स्क्रीन तो लेट्स स्टार्ट दिस नो दिस वी कैन स्टार्ट दिस आई विल डिस्कस द चैप्टर 5 ऑफ एमएस मीडिया विद यू व्हिच डील्स विद डिलेड पेमेंट टू माइक्रो एंड स्मॉल एंटरप्राइज देयर इज अ स्पेशल चैप्टर इन द एमएसएमई डी एक्ट 2006 व्हिच डील्स विद द डिलेड पेमेंट टू माइक्रो एंड स्मॉल एंटरप्राइजेस ना यस दिस स्पेशल पेमेंट दिस स्पेशल चैप्टर हैज वेरी एलोब्रेटेड प्रोविजन विच गिव्स द प्रोडक्शन टू दी एम एस एम ई फॉर रिकवरी ऑफ मनी फ्रॉम देअर डेटस एंड इफ दे आर नॉट पेइंग द गवर्नमेंट इज विथ यू यूर इंडियन गवर्नमेंट इज विथ यू फॉर हेल्पिंग यू इन रिकवरिंग ऑफ दिस डेट फॉर दिस देर इज अ स्पेशल चैप्टर दैट इज चैप्टर फाइव विथ डील्स विद द डिलेड पेमेंट ऑफ माइक्रो एंड स्मॉल एंटरप्राइजेस my dear friends please note one thing the title given to the chapter is micro and small enterprises micro and small enterprises that means chapter 5 of this act will not applicable to medium enterprises the payment protection by the government is provided only to micro and small enterprises medium enterprises are not covered the second very relevant question which payment is called delayed payment whether every payment which is not paid by the debtor is said to be a delayed payment which payment is said to be delayed payment this is another very important question which we will resolve today now third very important thing what do you mean by enterprise which enterprise within the meaning of msme d act third very important thing so friends let's start the discussion this is chapter 5 uh, section 15 to 24 हेलो सर जी यूनिटी हां सर इसको जरा ज़ूम आउट करिए हां बस बस इट्स ओके नाउ ओके अब इसको फुल स्क्रीन करिए पहले स्लाइड शो स्लाइड शो हां स्लाइड शो सर हां फ्रॉम करंट स्लाइड यस जी इज इट परफेक्ट नाउ नहीं अभी भी नहीं हुआ लेट्स स्टार्ट फ्रॉम now now it's perfect nahi sir abhi bhi nahi ho pehle to ho gaya just a minute i'm sharing it again now so now it's full screen it's perfect perfect okay now we will start our discussion from section 15 section 50 is liability of buyer to make payment please read the theme line of section 15 it's very clearly states that liability of buyer to make payment my question is what is liability liability means which you have to pay you never deny you are liable to pay and section 15 very clearly state that where any supplier where any supplier supplies any goods or render any service 
to any buyer the buyer shall make payment there of own or before the date <coughs> agreed upon between him and the supplier in writing in writing and where there is no agreement in this behalf before the appointed day now we will discuss every highlighted word which is highlighted in red ink in detail the word is where any supplier there is no word seller is there where any supplier who is a supplier we will also discuss it the sale word is not here used in the act the word supply is used in this act now where any supplier supplies another very important question any goods or render any service now the question is what is goods for the purpose of msme act and what is service for the msme act to any buyer to any buyer buyer can be any one the buyer shall make payment thereof on or before the date agreed between him and the supplier in writing now the question arises what includes in goods suppose you purchased a piece of land from anyone and after purchase he is not paying you whether this dues can be recovered through msme recovery mechanism the friends the answer to this question is absolutely no because for the purpose of msme act goods means every kind of movable property other than money and actionable claims other than money and actionable claim now the question whether immovable property is covered the answer is straight forward no only all kind of movable property are covered if the dues belongs to the movable property you have absolute right to recover the same to this chapter similarly if you have want to recover the money of shares share is a actionable claim lottery money is a actionable claim you cannot recover the money if you are in the business of financing and you want to recover the money because the service supplier is money then you cannot recover this in through this msm chapter all kind of movable property are there except immovable property money and actionable claim so friends lotteries immovable properties uh, shares or any kind of immovable property is not covered here. similarly any kind of services whether with the profit motive or without a profit motive you can recover the same getting my point where any supplier supplies any goods or render any service to any buyer very interesting example i am taking here suppose some shamshan ghats where dead bodies are buried or uh, bombs charges sub gives some service regarding to the dead body and for what that services whatever charges it may be charged is not payable by the buyer of the services then very interesting question whether this particular shamshan ghat can recover the money by putting a complaint under the msme act the friends the answer to this question is yes the answer to this question is yes because the law talking about the shamshan ghat is a supplier here supplies any service with the profit motive or without a profit motive 
he can recover money from any buyer. Similarly, if you are not paying to the school, if you are not paying to the college, after taking the admission, the relevant school fees or admission fees or tuition fees as the case may be, the school has absolute right to recover the same if he is the supplier under the MSME DA. So friends, these four words is very important to understand. Number one, supplier. Number two, goods. Number three, service. Number four, buyer. We will discuss it in detail. Another very important question. Date agreed upon between him and the supplier in writing. Some of my vendor called me. Okay, sir, you are dealing in sugar? I say yes. Send me 10 bags of sugar. I have supplied the same. And after supply, he that guy is not paying to me. That guy is not paying to money. Can I recover this money under the MSME Act? The answer is, sir, yes, I can recover. But after what period? What period? Because here he gives me an order. He gave me an order on phone, which is accepted by me. Whether it is in writing, whether it is in writing, the answer to this question is again no. It is not in writing. It is just an oral contract. It is just an oral contract. If there is no agreement in writing, then the role of appointed days come here. The role of appointed days come here. The another very important point we have to discuss, we have to understand today is appointed day, my friends. So there are five words now. Supplier, buyer, goods, service, appointed day. Now the another very important. If some of my vendor has given me an order on WhatsApp, on SMS, on email, whether it is agreed upon in writing after the Information Technology Act, my dear friends, all these modes of communication, all this electronic mode of communication, now acceptable by the IT Act. In my opinion, if some order is placed on WhatsApp, SMS, Telegram, email, or some another electronic mode, then it's deemed to be in writing. But this order is placed on phone, even through video call, then it de will not deem to be in writing. So, friend, the word writing in this entire context is very, very important. Another, where there is no agreement in this behalf before the appointed day. Appointed day we will discuss later. On. Another very important question. Provided that, provided that in no case, provided that in no case, the period agreed upon between the supplier and buyer in writing. Provided that in no case, period agreed between supplier and buyer in writing shall not exceed 45 days from the days of acceptance and day of deemed acceptance. Friends, another two words added into the my discussion. Acceptance and deemed acceptance. The provision to the section say very clearly, in no case you can enter into a written agreement which can be more than 45 days. The law is so powerful, they have need the power from the buyer and the supplier to enter into the agreement for a period exceeding 45 days. Her, this MSM Media Act is so powerful, it will override all other acts. 
there is a section, section called 24 in the MSMED Act, which says that it is not saying that section 44 AD of Income Tax Act, notwithstanding anything contained in section 28 to 43C of the Income Tax Act. It says, notwithstanding anything contained in any other law for time being in force in India. Getting my point? It is overriding all other laws of the country. This is time being in force. So friends, the lawmakers have drafted this law in such a stringent manner. They have sneezed your power to enter into the agreement for a period exceeding 45 days. For a period exceeding 45 days, my dear friends. That's why I am asking that this 45 day criteria is there. Why we are discussing 45 days? Because no buyer or supplier which covers under the MSMED Act has power to draft an agreement, even in writing, even registered with some department which gives the liberty to pay for more than 45 days. Another very important point, my dear friends, from the day of acceptance. From the day of acceptance. What is the day of acceptance? First, take the example of service. I called some electrician to repair my AC, my air condition. He came to my office for the service of my AC. I am a supply, I am a person registered under the MSM media. Both are registered under the MSM media. I called some electrician to fix my AC, to repair my AC. He came to my premises and give some service to my AC. After that, AC is working perfectly fine. Working fine. It is cooling very good. I asked the guys who fixed this problem, is it working perfectly? Sir, please check. It is working perfectly. It is working perfectly. I checked. I own the AC and asked him to sit for five minutes. The AC is cooling perfectly. After that, I give the acceptance to my service. But as that electrician guy go out of my premises, the AC stop working again. Just after five minutes. It is an electronic part. It can be possible. When I sign the slip, when I sign the work order, when I sign the service agreement, it is perfectly working. For whatever service I require, he gave him. But just after five minutes, as and when he left my premises, it again stopped working. Now my question is whether the service is completed in this case. So my dear friends, don't worry. The service is completed. You have to pay. You can't say that there is a deficiency in service. Because you have signed the slip. Agent 1, you give the service completion certificate. The period of 45 days or the period of 15 days, as the case may be, is to be calculated only from that date, my dear friend. Getting my point? And what will be the deemed result? Now, we will take another example with respect to goods now. Someone called me to supply 10 bags of sugar. I have supplied 10 bags. But due to certain human error, due to certain mistake, when the goods received the party destination, he called me, sir, I have ordered for 10 bags. I have ordered for 10 bags. Wherever I actually received only 9 bags. I received actually nine bags. He raises the objection. The receiver of goods raises the objection 
regarding delivery of goods with regard to quantity with regarding to rate with regarding to quality he can raise he can has a right my question is what from which date this period of 45 days is to be calculated from date of invoice well from the date of actual receipt of goods when the day i raises the objection all the day when this objection is actually removed by the buyer this is the very important question friends we are calculating the period of 45 days in the case of disallowance under section 43 bh regarding which mr chawla is discussing during his opening remarks whether this 45 days period or 15 days period is to be calculated from the date of invoice the answer is again no my dear the invoice date the day of supply of goods the day of aiwa bill has no relevance my dear getting my point what we are seeing for making that is from section 43 bh the day on which the invoice is entered my dear friends i want to clarify to you this lecture this webinar the day of invoice has no relevance for determining the period of 45 days or 15 days as the case may be the period of 45 days will start only from the date of acceptance or date of deemed acceptance now i will tell you in this particular case whether the objection is raised in writing the answer the example taken by me i what i had he called me he called me on phone he one bag is short sir one bag is short sir the again the receiver of goods has raised the objection with regard to the quantity of goods which he can raise but one deficiency in raising the objection the law very clearly very strictly state that if the buyer has any objection with regard to quantity quality rate or anything with regard to the service of goods then this objection must be raised in writing if the objection is not raised in writing then it will be deemed that no objection has been raised by the buyer no objection has been raised by the buyer my dear sirs getting my point now the people are becoming smart immediately on the receipt of goods he drafted a mail and stated me that one bag of sugar is short but unfortunately this mail has been drafted after 15 days of receipt of goods again there is a technical lacuna if the objection has been received by the receiver of the goods my dear friend after 15 days of receive then again it will be deemed that no objection has been raised by him no objection has been raised by him getting my point my dear friends no objection has been raised by him objection must be raised he can write to raise but it must be writing and it must be within 15 days of receipt of goods third very important question after listing me the supplier or the buyer who has received the goods has raised the objection in writing and only within the 15 days as i set at the statutory time limit to raise the objection is 15 days within 3 days but the objection has not been removed the objection has not been settled the objection has not been cleared by the supplier 
even after six months of the supply, uh, even after six months from the date of objection, the so friend is there any limit for removal of objection? Is there any limit on removal of objection? So friends, here I want to tell you very clearly, very passionately, very confidently, there is no time limit. Friends, please note that there is no time limit prescribed in the law for removal of defect. Meaning thereby, if the defect is removed, not removed by the supplier, the period of the 15 days or 45 days will start only from the date from removal of objection. So I have given a very important tip to you, very important tax planning tool to you with regard to section 43BH. Raise the objection. If the objection is not removed by your supplier, ask him to not to remove the objection. Because if he didn't remove the objection, the period of 45 days for the purpose of disallowance under section 43BH will count it only from the days of 45 days after the completion of 45 days. So my dear friends, my humble suggestion, my humble tax planning tool to do to adopt this practice. This by doing this, do, you can better position to tackle the hefty and you can dichronous this allows for section 43 BH. So friend, it is my side with regard to acceptance and deemed acceptance. Another very important thing. If no objection is raised and there is no agreement in writing, if no objection has raised and there is no agreement in writing, then from which date this 45 day period is to be counted? Friend, if there is no agreement in writing between buyer and supplier, then the day immediately falling, the day immediately falling, the expiry of 15 days from the day of acceptance. Then in that case, the payment is to be made within 15 days. 15, no, not 15 days, on 16 days. 15 days, friends, are also wrong. In my interpretation, as to the best of my knowledge, and to the best of my opinion, the relevant date for the payment in case there is no agreement in writing is not 15th day, it is the 16th day, my dear friend, the day following the period of expiry of 15 days. So in my opinion, it is 16th day. Getting my point? So I hope you are learning something new today. Friends, one another very important thing I will tell you. There is a professional opportunity link. Suppose, in case there is no agreement in writing between buyer and supplier, the period of 16 days is there, maximum 16 days. And if there is a written agreement between buyer and supplier, then period extends to 45 days. Then the period extends to 45 days. My very important and relevant question, my dear friend, is whether what is the agreement, whether it can be oral, or whether it can be writing, the law is simply saying that it must be in writing. Can we enter into the agreement between this buyer and supplier with retrospective effect? With retrospective effect? Whether law is saying something on that? My dear friends, please note that the law. MSMED Act is completely silent. The MSMED Act is completely silent on this point. In my humble opinion, you advise your client to draft a written agreement incorporating all the terms and conditions which you want to incorporate in it 
with a retrospective effect because the law didn't put any bars on it it will give you the facility the remedial of extended time limit of 45 days and you can hurt take certain other clues with regard to with regard to this agreement because this is in writing so there is very important opportunity laying here advice your client as per the first advice given by the me in my first tax planning tip second very important asset to take the benefit of extended period of 45 days advise all your clients which are in the ambit of the section 43b act to draft written agreement which is drafted by you which is planned by you which is suggested by you with a retrospective effect because the law has no restriction on that moving further my dear it's is all about section 15 from my side now i am moving to section 16 before that it is very important to know that who is supplier because until or unless you are supplier you cannot take the benefit of chapter 5 you cannot take the benefit of chapter 5 my dear my dear friends the law section 2 clause n defines the word supply in such a beautiful way it says supplier means a micro or small enterprise medium is not there supplier means a micro or small enterprise who has filed a memorandum with the authority referred to in subsection 1 of section 8 meaning thereby supplier can be only micro or small enterprises now we will have to study what is enterprise and what is this memorandum before this udyam registration my dear friend there is a concept of adyog aadhar memorandum there is a concept of adyog aadhar memorandum or before adyog aadhar memorandum there is a concept to file a detailed written memorandum with the ministry to take the benefit of msme d act to so friends suppliers mean a micro or small enterprise who has filed a memorandum with a authority referred to in subsection 1 of section a getting my point now the question where this memorandum is to be filed but one thing i want to clear you all the viewers ki udyam registration must be there to become the supplier until or unless you are udyam registered you cannot take the benefit of this recovery mechanism to advise all your clients to have a udyam registration for recovery of msme dues from their debtors getting my point now the very important question the authority referred to in subsection 1 of section 8 is the web portal of udyam registration that is udyamregistration.gov.in where you can apply and get themselves udyam register before your maggie will rent it will take only 2 or 3 minutes even maggie to 2 minute mein banti hai udyam registration 2 minute se pehle banta hai but you must have but my discussion point is somewhat different suppose you have a do aadhar memorandum because a do aadhar memorandum is replaced with udyam registration with effect from 1st july 2020 please note that date a do aadhar memorandum has replaced with udyam registration with effect from 1st july 20 my dear any person who has 
having udyam register although there are memorandum but didn't migrated him self to udyam registration can take the benefit of this provision the answer to this question is again no because the government ask very clearly in his notification ki everyone having a dog aadhar memorandum has to migrate themselves into uddyam registration by filing a new application for migration getting my point and the government has extended this date various time for the migration but if as on date you have not migrated your adhyog aadhar memorandum into the uddyam registration you are not set to be supplier as per the clause and of section 2 of msmed act so what will be the remedy another question people will ask me sir i have got myself registered under uddyam as on date but i want to recover my previous msmb dues from the i debtors can i recover it to so my dear friend answer to this question is again no the uddyam registration has only work prospectively not retrospectively it will work only prospectively not retrospectively my dear friends getting my point so definition of micro supplier what is very important supplier means a micro or small enterprises who has filed a memorandum with the authority referred to in sub section 1 of section 8 another very important question some people will ask me whether traders can recover their dues through this msme samadhan portal the answer to this question is again no because the traders are allowed to be registered under this uddyam only for the benefit of priority sector lending as per the office memorandum of 2nd july 2021 as per the office memorandum of 2nd july 2021 they are allowed to get themselves uddyam registration only for the benefit of what uh, priority sector lending then another very important question is why traders are not allowed however for that we have to study the definition of word enterprise the word enterprise the definition of word enterprise has still not changed in the law however the turnover criteria the uh, investment in plant machinery criteria has increased many fold but the word enterprise remains defined in the manner as the time when it is enacted when it is enacted isme koi badlav nahi now the question arises the word enterprise definition is very clearly state that ki anyone we will discuss later engaged in manufacturing or service sector can only be enterprise so as per the literal interpretation we are not going into the uh, detailed discussion on that because the time is very short today uh, we are assuming that ki as per literal interpretation traders has no right to recover their dues under chapter 5 of msmed act because they are not fall under the definition of enterprise they didn't not fall and very important thing my dear sir again we read the definition only up to that part we read the definition only up to that part 
But we ignored that part. We ignored that. The definition didn't complete here. It continues. Because in beginning, I have said you, it is drafted in a very beautiful manner. And includes. First, the National Small Industry Corporation being a company registered in the company act. I am not putting much emphasis on that. The Small Industrial Development Corporation of the State and Union Territory, by whatever name called, being a company registered under the company sector. Third, a company, please read the third part very clearly, very carefully, very carefully. Third sub clause to section 2N. A company, a cooperative society, a trust, a body. A company, a cooperative society, a trust or a body by whatever name called, by whatever name called, registered or constituted under any law for time being in force and engage in selling goods, engage in selling goods produced by small or micro enterprises or rendering services which are provided by such enterprises. The third point is very important, my dear friend, due to which my opinion is little bit different from other speakers are talking on this point. This point very clearly states that, this sub clause very clearly states that anyone who is registered under any law for time being in force, Manu, if it is sir, a company... Yes, sir? Sorry, sir. Sorry to interrupt you. Uh, yes. Sir, I have a link share kiya hai, WhatsApp. Pe. Just, just a minute. Zoom link, sir. Uh, well, Zoom is not working? Sorry. Pardon? Hello? G, sir. इस लिंक पे कोई इंटरप्शन आ रही है आप उस वाले लिंक को ज्वाइन कर लो अभी ये चलने देना जब आप वो ज्वाइन कर लेंगे तो मैं जयवीर फिर आप इनको शिफ्ट कर देना सीधा डायरेक्टली वहीं पे नहीं मैं क्या करूं आप वो वाला ज्वाइन करिए लिंक पहले जो मैंने आपको लिंक आया हां जी हां जी जस्ट अवेट हम सर उस लिंक पे मूव करने वाले हैं ये सेशन अब ये सेशन उस लिंक पे मूव करेंगे अब सीधा एक मिनट सर आपने कर लिया जॉइन सर इसको बंद कर दो सर हां जयवीर शिफ्ट करो चलो जल्दी जी जस्ट अ मिनट
progress. Okay. Now I start my discussion from close three. Any company, cooperative society, trust or body. A company, cooperative society, trust or body. By whatever name called. Registered or constituted for time under any law for time being in force and my dear friends engaged in selling good produced by micro or small enterprises and rendering services which are provided by such enterprises are also covered meaning thereby if a trader which is a pure trader who is registered under any law for time being in a force is in the state of a company cooperative society trust or body and selling goods produced by these enterprises, which is micro or small enterprises, even then he will be considered as a supplier. It is as per my interpretation. So, my dear friend, first read the entire definition of supplier very carefully. Moving further, sir. Now come to the word enterprise. The word enterprise means an industrial undertaking. Word enterprise means an industrial undertaking or a business concern or any other establishment by whatever name called engaged in manufacture or production of goods in any manner pertaining to any industry specified in the first schedule of industrial development and regulation act 1951 and providing or rendering ji yes, sir how i can do it जूम आउट करना पड़ेगा सर थोड़ा एक मिनट ओके it's quite zoom sir uh, yeah it's okay now appointed day to be enterprise yeah it's okay okay yes yes to be an enterprise right okay coming back to the definition of word enterprise the enterprise word it define means a industrial undertaking number one second you are business concern third any other establishment engaged in manufacture or production of goods That's why we are saying that the manufacturer are MSM. In any manner, again we are reading incompletely, pertaining to any industry specified in the first schedule of Industrial Development and Regulation Act, nineteen fifty-one. Friends, for that you have to read the first schedule of Industrial Development and Regulation Act, nineteen fifty-one. Until or unless industry is specified in that act. it cannot be enterprise getting my point until or unless that particular industry in which you are doing the business you are running your concern is specified in the first schedule of industrial development and regulation in act 2051 you cannot set himself a enterprise under the msme act or engage in providing or rendering any service or services now come to the definition of buyer So buyer is defined so beautifully again. Buyer means whoever buys any goods or services from any supplier for consideration. Buyer, what will be the beauty of this law? Buyer can be anyone, whether he is registered or not registered. It is irrelevant. Suppose you have certain 
अप्लाइड सर्टन गुड्स और सर्विसेज टू पीएमओ ऑफिस और ऑनरेबल प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ इंडिया ऑफिस एंड दैट पीएमओ ऑफिस और प्रेसिडेंट ऑफिस ऑफ इंडिया इज नॉट पेइंग योर ड्यूज विद इन द स्पेसिफाइड पीरियड एज मेंशन इन सेक्शन 15 एज पर द मैंडेट ऑफ सेक्शन 15 you can file a complaint against pmo office or the honorable president of india office this is the beauty of this law buyer can be any one getting my point this is the protection this is the uh, energy given to the uh, msme persons so buyer can be any one the only condition it is not given as gift goods or services is not supplied as gift it is for consideration it is for consideration if the consideration is there you have to pay if the consideration is there the buyer has to pay. another very important consideration important point the consideration is there whether it is necessary that it is must be for adequate consideration the law is silent on that even a 100 rupees goods can be supplied for rupee 1 if the consideration of the there you can recover rupee 1 getting my point now come to the definition of appointed day section 2 hub uh, clause b defines appointed day appointed days as i told you earlier means the day falling immediately after the expiry of period from 15 days of acceptance or deemed acceptance again read it appointed day means the day appointed days mean the day falling immediately after the expiry of period of 15 days from day of acceptance or day of deemed acceptance of any goods or rendering any services from the buyer or from supplier for the purpose of clause one the day of acceptance means the day of actual delivery of goods or rendering of service and again Where any objection is made in writing by the buyer regarding the setup of goods or services within the 15 days from the date of delivery of goods or rendering of service, the day on which such objection is removed by the supplier. We have already discussed on that. The day of deemed acceptance means where no objection is made in writing by the buyer regarding the setup of goods within 15 days from the date of delivery of goods or rendering of services. The day of actual delivery of goods or rendering of services will be the date of deemed acceptance. now i am skipping on that i am not taking the example uh, now come to the section 16 section 16 is again a most powerful section to strengthen the micro and small industry section 16 says that date from which and rate at which interest is paid if the amount is not paid by the msc supply uh, buyer within the specified period as mentioned in section 15 of the act then he will be liable to pay the same along with the interest as mandated by section 16 but the section 16 says now where any buyer where any buyer fails to make the payment of the amount where any buyer fails to make payment of the amount to the supplier as required under section 15 the buyer the buyer shall not withstanding anything contained in any agreement not with standing anything contained in any agreement between buyer and supplier or any law for time being enforced it is overriding both 
you cannot enter into any agreement which is in contrary to the section 16 and anything if you anything say contrary to the section 16 of the msmd act it will also overwrite it so read it once again where any buyer fails to make payment of the amount to the supplier as required by the section 15 the buyer shall be uh, shall notwithstanding anything contained in the agreement between the buyer and the supplier or any law for timing and for be liable be liable to pay compound interest be liable to pay compound interest with monthly rest to the supplier on or that from the appointed day or as the case may be from the day immediately following the day agreed upon at three times of the bank rate notified by the DGR bank. This is the law. Now we discuss, we will give you a commentary of the section. The people generally ask me during the webinars, number, question number one, whether we can draft an agreement in which we are agreed on interest, but this interest will be a simple interest. So, my dear friend, the answer to this question is straightforward. No, again. The very clearly state that if the interest is to be paid, the interest is to be paid is compound interest. Only. The point number two, whether I can enter into the agreement between buyer and supplier. This talks about paying of interest, which is a compound interest, but at a quarterly, half yearly, or yearly as the my dear friends, sorry again. Sorry again. The interest is to be calculated monthly. Third, whether we can enter into an agreement which talks about interest, which is a compounded interest and can to be calculated at monthly interest at a rate which is different from the bank rate of the RBI? The answer is again no. You have to pay interest. You have to pay interest which is compounded, not simple. It is to be calculated monthly, not quarterly, half yearly, by annually or annually. It has to be paid at the three times of RBI rate, bank rate. It is three times of bank rate. There is no liberty to take decision of talk because it is a law of the country which very clearly mandated that this is the penalty in the shape of interest if you are making delayed payment to the MSMEs, delayed payment to micro or small enterprises. So friends, one more thing. Our tax audit report, however, it is not my topic. Our tax audit report, there is a clause which is talking about interest admissible under section 16 of the MSME Act. Friends, please note that in this clause, we are not providing interest. So, there are certain dues which are payable to the micro and small enterprises for which you have made a provision in your books of accounts with regard to the disallowance of section 43 BH. And in his audit report, in your audit report, you are saying that if this interest is not provided, which is mandated by section 16, your balance sheet is giving true and fair view of the state of affair and your uh, profit and loss account giving a correct picture of the profit, whether your balance sheet is giving true and fair view or whether your PL statement is giving true picture of the profit and you are certifying the balance sheet since 2006, since 2006, friends, it is the law from 2006. But we never bothered to follow the same. We are certifying the balance sheet, knowing the fact that there is a law here. But earlier, what you have done is done. But it is now again very important to report on this point. If some interest payable under Section 16 
is not provided in the books of account, which in your opinion as an auditor is to be provided, then you have to give observation or qualification in your audit report. If you are not commenting on that point, you are putting yourself in trouble. So my humble advice to my all auditor brothers and sisters who are attending this webinar or who are not attending this webinar, but whenever they see my video or recording of this webinar, please start commenting on this point because it is a law of the land which is very strictly required to be followed now. Because at many occasions, our Honorable Finance Minister Saiba Shemit Nirmala Sitaraman Ji has stated that this is law not enacted by NDA government. It is a law. This is way back since 2006. Why such a hue and cry is now? Why you are crying now? What we have done? We have inserted a clause, the clause name section 43B clause H in the law, which is not saying something wrong. It is saying that we will not allow you the expenditure until you paid the same within the mandate of section 15. Then what the law says, whenever you pay the money to your creditors or debtors, you will take the deduction of the same. The law has done nothing. The law has making a very simple and fair amendment for the protection of MSME by saying that we are not going to allow the expenditure on accrual basis for which you are making no payment. Just booking the expenditure in the books just to reduce the profit or just to reduce the tax burden. We are not disallowing the same. We are not denying the same. Whatever we say, what is the purpose of Section 43B? It very clearly says that in the year in which you make the actually pay the sum to the concerned person, you will take the reduction. You will take the reduction. Very simple. And if that is the theme purpose. This is the basic intention behind the intention bringing the provision of Section 43B in the enactment of income tax law is very clear. Certain payment allowed on actual payment basis. Certain payment allowed on actual payment basis. So getting my dear point, the interest has to pay. It must be compounded. It monthly compounded at three times of the bank rate notified by the government. Now another very important question people ask me, sir, from where I will get this bank rate? Sir, this rate is updated on the RBI website quarterly or whenever it will change. So from last six, seven years, you can take the uh, rate from the RBI rate, multiply it by three and calculate the interest accordingly. Now, another question people will ask me. Now, the another question people will ask me whether this interest is to be calculated in wise wise. Suppose there are 60, 70 invoices pending, all of it of different dates. Some part payment is received, some part payment is not received against some of the invoices. So, friends, here this interest is to be calculated in wise wise monthly compounded. Or it is a very tedious and tough exercise in which this AI tool, some kind of AI tool is to be used and unfair a professional opportunity life for we chartered accountants. Some of the councils, some of the councils of the country is insisting the parties who are filing complaints to take the certificate of interest calculation certified only by a chartered accountant. Because in calculation, no one is stronger than our chartered accountants. When we talk about chartered accountant, in every complaint file, their certificate is to be attached. The certificate is to be attached. And this is an opportunity which is for 
वी चार्टर्ड अकाउंटेंट बिकॉज इट इज ए वेरी टफ एंड टीरियस कैलकुलेशन बिकॉज इट इज टू बी मंथली कंपाउंडेड इट टू बी कंपाउंडेड इन वाई एस वाई इट इज टू बी ए कंपाउंडेड एंड इट इज आरबीआई रेट इज टू बी चेक देर आर सो मेनी फैक्टर्स इज टू बी चेक फॉर कैलकुलेटिंग दिस इंटरेस्ट दिस इज ए very important booming opportunity in this recovery mechanism for the chartered accountant who want to enter in this new field another very important point friends people ask me my account is settled my account is settled i have paid clear but i have delayed make all payment delayed hari payment mai 45 din aur 15 din ke baad हो गया खाता नील हो गया आज उससे काम भी नहीं कर द पार्टी टू होम आई हैव मेड डिलेड पेमेंट कैन फाइल ए कंप्लेंट अगेंस्ट मी फॉर रिकवरी ऑफ इंटरेस्ट ओनली तो फ्रेंड्स वेरी हैप्पी टू हियर वेरी हैप्पी टू अनाउंस यू वेरी हैप्पी टू टेल यू इवन फॉर द इंटरेस्ट यू कैन फाइल द कंप्लेन The account balance as on the date of complaint is zero, but all the payment has made delayed. Can I file a complaint to the MSME Council only for the recovery of interest? The answer to this question is absolutely yes. You can file the complaint for the recovery of interest, my dear sir. There is so many things to speak. I can speak on this section for a days. But for the paucity of time, I have to touch on another point. So I am moving further. But one thing I want to touch here: say in that particular year, early do you have not provided the interest. In this case, the assessee has the person has filed the complaint against you against an MSME council, and an MSME council has passed an award against you, passed an award against you, in which the interest is paid for three years, last three years. So whether it is prior period interest, whether it is prior period interest, yes, my dear friend, it is prior period interest. It is your mistake. You have not provided it earlier. So you have to mention your report accordingly. Here is another opportunity for you. Another very thing. Can we can draft a compromise agreement or waiver agreement in which we mutually decide this interest has waived? This interest has waived. Can we do so? The answer is again no. Sir. This interest is mandatory in nature, which you have to pay means you have to pay. Getting my point? Further, the interest paid by you for delayed payment of MSME is not allowed under the income tax as deduction. It is not a deductible expenditure. It is not a deductible expenditure, sir. Friends. Do the post your fine. I have to move further. Main concern in section sixteen, sir. Failure to make payment, compound interest, monthly interest, three times of the RBI. Now come to the section seventy. Now amount has decided. It has delayed. How I recover this? Thing? For that there is a section seventy in there. It's very clearly said that for any goods supplied or services rendered by the supplier. For any goods supplied or services rendered by the supplier, the buyer shall liable to pay the amount with interest thereon as provided in section sixteen. For any goods supplied or services rendered by the supplier, the buyer shall liable to pay the amount with interest thereon. Not only you principal you have to pay, but interest also has to pay. i am not saying that the section 17 of the msme act is mandating that getting my point now come to the section it is very interesting for recovery of the amount you have to take the shadow of section 18 you come to the ambit of section 18 here reference to micro and small enterprise facilitation council Section eighteen talks about reference to micro and small enterprise facilitation council. It very clearly says that not withstanding anything contained in any other law for time being in force. Again, very powerful section. 
not withstanding anything contained in any other law for timing in force and may bear it is like a gita bible or quran nothing or i did it is supreme the law for the production drafted by whatever gentleman or whatever government is supreme in nature it is saying that not withstanding anything contained in any law for timing in force any party to dispute any party to dispute me ichcha jana chahiye to jaye nahi jana chahte to na jaye any party to dispute me with regard to any amount due under section 17 with regard to any amount due under section 17 make a reference make a reference to micro and small enterprise facilitation कौन से इच्छा है भैया जाना चाहो तो चले जाओ नहीं जाना चाहो तो ना जाओ लेकिन ये एक रास्ता है एमएसएमई के पास रिकवरी के लिए ओन रिसीट ऑफ रेफरेंस अंडर सबसेक्शन वन द कौंसिल ओन रिसीट ऑफ रेफरेंस अंडर सबसेक्शन वन द कौंसिल शेल आइडर इट सेल्फ कंडक्ट कंसाइलेशन इन दैटर or seek assistance of any institution or center providing alternate dispute resolution but it say whenever a reference is received under the section 1 the council itself conduct the conciliation in the matter now my dear friends what do you mean by conciliation conciliation is process where a independent conciliator tries to settle the dispute without making any award it tries to bring party into some kind of compromise without going into the dispute the conciliator will try to settle the dispute not by making an award just by bringing the party together to settle their dues amicably amicably to so 182 talks about conciliation not arbitration and friends please note that there is a difference between conciliation and arbitration and we being a chartered accountant there is a third very important fourth very important opportunity lies here here we can act as conciliator for the parties we may approach the relevant councils of the states and the districts and they they are making their taking the names of conciliator you can ask him to make the panel of the conciliator or you can uh, uh, in, uh, ask them to include your name as conciliator in the matter so that you can settle the dispute between the party so as a conciliator you can have another opportunity under section 18 of section 2 on the seat of reference under section 1 the council shall either itself conduct the conciliation in the matter or seek assistance from the institution center providing alternate dispute resolution there are many center there are many center which is providing this alternate dispute resolution services our honorable president of ICI she ranjit agarwal ji has also stated in uh, annual conference the name of the yol very recently had that the institute is going to float a section 8 company for this arbitration and conciliation and meditation work so the institute is also working on that it is very good opportunity accept audit or other things here lies in as a conciliator so on the seat of reference under subsection 1 the council either side itself conduct the conciliation in the matter or seek the assistance of any institution or center providing alternate dispute resolution service by making a reference to such an institution or center for conducting conciliation and provision of section 65 to 81 of arbitration and conciliation act 1960 1926 shall apply to such dispute as the conciliation was initiated under part 3 of that act getting my point for that you have to study the arbitration and conciliation act 1986 and section 65 to 81 of this section, uh, uh, law very clearly states the law and the part 3 of the now 183 is very important section 
183 is very important. It says where the conciliation initiated under subsection 2, where the conciliation initiated under subsection 2 is not successful or stand terminated without any settlement between the parties, the council shall either itself take up the dispute for arbitration or refer it to any institution or center providing alternate dispute resolution services for such arbitration and the provision of arbitration and conciliation act shall apply to them. The main point, main thrust area in this section is that where conciliation is not successful, then resort is section 18.3, meaning thereby it is to be understood by all the participants of this webinar very clearly the first step is conciliation, next step is arbitration. If conciliation failed under section 18.2, then 18.3 is come into picture. Otherwise, there is no role of 18.13. We have to settle the dispute under 18.2 only. 18.3 comes into the picture only after the failure of 18.2. So that's why the law very clearly said that where the conciliation initiated under subsection 2 is not successful or stand terminated without any settlement, which is more highlighted by me in writing, between the parties, then the council shall either itself take the dispute for arbitration and independent arbitrator is appointed there. Here the chartered accountant can also play an important role and another professional opportunity lies here being act as a arbitrator and the institute has also a certificate course on that and ICI has doing lot of things for the arbitration and conciliation. They are also making a panel of arbitrator. You can include your name in the panel of uh, arbitrator and take the benefit of this opportunity. So friends, it is with regard to 1813 and another very important thing. 18 subsection 4 is again very important. Notwithstanding anything contained in any other law for time being in force, again, the micro and small enterprises facilitation council or center providing alternate dispute resolution services shall have jurisdiction to act as an arbitrator or a conciliator under this section in dispute between the supplier located in its jurisdiction and the supplier located anywhere in India. What it means? I will clarify the whole position by taking the example. Suppose I am a supplier who has to receive, collect my money, who has to recover my money, has a jurisdiction in the Punjab. I am come under the purview of Punjab board. But the person from whom money is recovered is having jurisdiction in Tamil Nadu. Where this complaint is to be filed in Punjab or in Tamil Nadu, this complaint is to be filed in Punjab only, where the situation or supplier is located. The person in Karnataka or Tamil Nadu or Telangana has to come to Punjab to attend this hearing, or they can attend it virtually. But my jurisdiction is lies at a place where from where I am doing the business. So it is a convenience again for the person who has to recover money. He has not to travel anywhere from the place of his business without interrupting his business, without disturbing his business. He can file the complaint online on the MSMB Ramadan portal. The all the hurdles for the person who are not paid their dues. They have to take what remedy he they have to take. The place of the jurisdiction remains the place of the supplier from where he has supplied the good. Another very important section. Every reference made under this section shall be decided within a period of 90 days from date of making of such reference. This date say up your reference made karenge, uske 90 days mein khatam hona hai. How are people asking me their case are getting delayed? There are certain more administrative reasons for the same. This is not a right platform to discuss the same, but as per the law, the reference is to be decided within 90 days from the receipt of reference. Coming, uh, going further, another very important point. Suppose you have filed a reference to Micro Small and Facilitation Council, and upon your reference, the 
council has heard you and decided that and passed an award in favor of you. Now, the buyer from whom the money is recoverable is filed to complain, filed a appeal against this award. So what the section 19 says regarding that? Section 19 is talking about application for setting aside decree award or order. Application for setting aside decree award or order. This section says no application for setting aside any decree, award, or other order. Read it once again. No application for setting aside any decree, award, or other order made either by the council itself or any institution providing alternate dispute resolution services to which such reference is made by the council shall be entertained by the court. Shall be entertained by the court. Unless, please net, read it very carefully. Unless the appellant not being the supplier, supplier ko kuch nahi jama karana, lekin buyer ko jama karana hai, has deposited with it, has deposited with it, 75% of amount in terms of decree or award. Whatever amount of decree or award passed by the MSC Council, so award of 1 crore is passed including interest by the MSA Council and the buyer has to, uh, buyer dissatisfied with his award, with his order, with his degree, what to file an appeal with some court of law. Then he has to deposit at least 75% of 1 crore which is amounts to be 75 lakh with court. Now, the people will ask me a question whether this 75% can be uh, deposited in the shape of bank guarantee or some surety or some performance guarantee or some like thing like that. Kuch guarantee mein de sakte hai, kuch surety mein de sakte hai. So, friend, please note that this amount has to be deposited, which is at least 75%. Friend. No concession on that, no remission on that, no sunwai on that with the court before entertaining any application, any appeal application. So this is the beauty of this law. If the award of one crore has been passed against you, you have to deposit if you want to go further. Otherwise, you cannot go further. Now, another very important question, whether supplier is not satisfied with the decision, whether he has to pay again? No, sir. Supplier has no need to pay, but buyer, if wants to file the appeal, has to pay. As the case may be, in other manner, directed by Hutch Code, provided that pending disposal of the application to set aside the degree, award or order, the court shall order such percentage of amount deposited shall be paid to the supplier as it considers reasonable under the circumstances of the case, subject to such condition as it deems necessary to impose. Um, now the question arises. I have filed the complaint. The council has passed away award in favor of me. And against this award, the buyer is going to appeal by depositing 75%. But by fighting this legal battle, what the supplier has done? Nothing. I am just battling with my supplier for buyer. So the law is against her very beautiful. The court, the law says the supplier who has won the award can request the court to release such percentage of amount deposited with the supplier as it considered reasonable under the circumstances to the case of the subject to such condition as it deemed necessary to impose. As it deemed necessary to impose. Now coming to section 20. Section 20. Establishment of micro and small enterprise facilitation council. Section 20. Establishment of micro, small and enterprise facilitation council. This section says 
द स्टेट गवर्नमेंट शेल बाय नोटिफिकेशन एस्टेब्लिश वन और मोर माइक्रो एंड स्मॉल इंटरप्राइजेज फैसिलिटेशन काउंसिल एट सच प्लेसेस एक्सरसाइजिंग हर जस्टिफिकेशन और सच एरिया एज मे बी स्पेसिफाइड अर्लियर द पीपल आर अवेयर ऑफ नॉट अवेयर अबाउट दैट लॉ बट नाउ द डे द गवर्नमेंट इज वेरी keen to strengthen msme sector they are conducting so much seminar webinar as you seen our institute has constituted a very important separate committee for that purpose that is called msme and startup committee of the icai the main purpose behind this is to provide to strengthen to production to growth of msme similarly earlier there is a one council in a state there is a earlier provision of making one council in the state now the law has changed now the law has changed law says now the law says ki by notification establish one or more micro or small enterprise the some state government has decided like haryana or punjab or up they have constituted district councils district council where the application for the recovery of rupees 20 lakhs can lies if the matter is more than 20 lakh then you can complain to the state council one state council is there then in every district of the state there is a district council to all this has been done by our government of india to speed up the recovery process speed up the recovery process so that no unrecovered dues remain disputed remained unrecoverable by the msc another very important thing the government has take, recently taken they have created a very beautiful portal for the debt very beautiful separate portal for the debt and that portal name is MSME Samadhan, and this portal name is MSME Samadhan. Sir, this is an online portal from on which from anywhere in India you can file a complaint against recovery of dues. Another very important point, my dear. This is the composition. How this MSME committee. is uh, for the uh, micro small and enterprise council is to be constituted and uh, what is the structure of the same so the micro small and enterprise association council consists of not less than 3 but not less than 5 members maximum 5 member minimum 3 members one member is director of industry another is office period of the same then representative from bank or financial institution and one person having specialty in the field of finance trade or commerce so this is the consolidation is the i am not touching amount again section 22 is very important which talks about certain kind of disclosure certain kind of disclosure which have to be uh, mentioned while preparing the account and that is to be shown in notice of account and the auditor has to be put on uh, their valuable comment on the tab which again some of part of the country or some uh, members are not Uh, falling the same due to certain ignorant just a minute sir and certain disclosure has to be given i am just touching on that but disclosure is to be required to be given in every balance sheet where any buyer is required gets his account audited under any law getting my point where a msme supplier or buyer is required to get his account audited under any law for time being in force the buyer shall furnish 
the buyer shall furnish following additional information in his annual accounts. Namely, you have to tell the principal amount and interest due their own remaining unpaid to any supplier, the amount of interest paid by buyer in terms of section 16 along with the amount of the payment made to the supplier beyond beyond it, the amount of due and payable for the period of delay in making which have been paid but beyond the appointed day during the year without adding interest specified under the act, then amount of interest secured and remaining unpaid at the each accounting year, the amount of further interest remaining due and payable even in the succeeding year until such date when the interest due as above are actually paid to the small enterprise for the purpose of this allowance of expenditure deductible under section 23. Then my friend, there is very important section that is called uh, section 23. Section 23, that talks about interest not to be allowed at deduction from income. Whatever interest which is paid or payable under section 16, section 23 is incorporated a very beautiful section that is called section 23. This is interest is not allowed at deduction from income. Friends, if we have talk about income tax act, People are saying that interest payable to micro and small enterprises is not allowed as deductible expenditure. I generally ask a question from them. Where it is written in the income tax law that this interest being a expenditure wholly and exclusively for the purpose of business is not allowed as a business expenditure. Because there is a mandate of section 37 of income tax act 1967 and uh, which very clearly state that any expenses which is spent, which is incurred wholly and exclusively for the purpose of business or profession carried on by the SSC during the financial year, allowed as expenditure under Section 37. Where it is written in the income tax law, that this interest, which is wholly and exclusively for the purpose of, uh, wholly and exclusively for the purpose of uh, business or profession carried on by the SSC, is not allowed. So this is the beauty of allowance. This is beauty of law. This law very beautifully states that notwithstanding anything contained in the income tax act. Income tax me kuch kaha gaya hai, nahi kaha gaya, bhool jaiye. Notwithstanding anything contained in the income tax act 1961, the amount of interest payable and paid by the buyer under and in accordance with the provision of this act shall not for the purpose of computation of income tax act be allowed as a deduction. Getting my point? For the purpose of computation of income, this will not allowed as a deduction. For the purpose of computation of income, it will not allowed as a deduction. Paid or payable, both. Not allowed as a deduction. So this is the beauty of the law. Nowhere written in the income tax law. But this law, I said you earlier, it is a, like a Gita, Bible or Quran, which is a supreme giving the power to disallow the expenditure even of the income tax act. So this is section 23 and uh, section 24 is talking about overriding effect my dear friends. The provision of section 15 to 23 shall have effect notwithstanding anything consistent there will contain in any other law for time being in force. Jitna maine aapko padaya, jitna humne discuss kiya, isme jo kuch bhi kya rakha hai, is के अलावा हिंदुस्तान के किसी कानून में इसके खिलाफ कुछ कह रखा है तब भी ये सेक्शन 15 और 23 ओवरराइड करेंगे इसके लिए उन्होंने एक सेपरेट सेक्शन डाला एमएसएम मीडिया एक्ट में दैट इज सेक्शन 24 व्हिच इज टॉकिंग अबाउट ओवरराइडिंग इफेक्ट तो दिस एक्ट इज सो पावरफुल जस्ट फॉर द प्रोटेक्शन एंड यू कैन से ग्रोथ एंड एंपावरिंग एमएसएमई so that India can make a Vixit Bharat, a developed Bharat by 2047, which is the vision of our Honorable Prime Minister Shri Narendra Modi ji. I have a lot of many things, a uh, lot of other things to discuss with you. I have to give my presentation on uh, MSME Hamadan portal, which uh, we will request the MSME committee to touch, uh, a, a, take it in second part of the session, because this is a very important area. Where can you grab the opportunity? Now, in the last two minutes, I am telling you what booming opportunity we chartered accountants have in this MSME world. So, friends, 
In this recovery mechanism, the chartered accountant can play a very important role by assisting their suppliers in recovering their money. You can act as an arbitrator, you can act as a conciliator, you can act as a consultant, you can give the certification work, you can advise, you can give the warning letters you, to the debtor of your client to recover their money by just giving the reminder letter. So there is a lot of opportunity. And here is the opportunity lie because here you are not saying your client to pay taxes to the government checker. But here you are advising, you are advising them to recover the money. Or paisa kise bura lagta hai, mera bhaiya. Paisa right. hapko achha lagta hai, toh hum toh paisa dilwane ka kaam kar rahi hai, lagwane ka kaam nahi kar rahi. To advise your client, study their balance sheet, find out some data whose money is still stuck. And advise your client by giving your valuable services, valuable professional services, helping them in the covering due, or any kind of doubt you still have in your mind, I am here to help you in any manner because I have taken oath to make a India a Vixit India by 2047. With this word, thank you so much and over to CA Divyam Janji for taking up the question of my viewers. Thank you so much, Divyam Janji. Uh, thank you so much, Manoj sir. Uh, Manoj sir, it was a great energy vera session. <laughs> what a great energy you had. We have received certain questions. I'll definitely take up with you. First of all, there were many questions related to this principle and interest also. So they were asking, this, do the term outstanding dues include principle and interest and can we just raise the demand for interest? I think you correctly answered that that we can also just, if they don't have a balance, that we can apply for it. Just, do you want to highlight anything on that further? Friends, please note that there is very clear doubt. Outstanding means, when interest is mandatory in nature, that means you have to pay, means you have to pay. So whenever you have to calculate outstanding amount, it includes interest also. Interest up to date of filing of reference. And please note that, you are not eligible to return only up to date of reference of application, but you are eligible to recover the interest up to the date of award, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Awards yeah. Milte ek saal lag gaya. So aapka meter nahi rukla hai, sir. That's... You can recover up to the date of award. Yes. Uh, one thing you discussed in starting that uh, order placed through WhatsApp, mail or SMS will be considered as in writing. Yeah. Uh, is this mentioned there? This in uh, somewhere, sir. Please note that there is an Information Technology Act is there yeah. in place. IT Act is there, and at IT Act say that any evidence which is on any electronic media or through any electronic media, yes, can be considered as a evidence in any court of law in India. Yes. So when we are talking about writing. What you are doing in WhatsApp, Telegram, SMS, email, you are writing the message. It is no way that you have to write in notebook or you have to write on paper. You are drafting an agreement. You are making an agreement on WhatsApp. Getting my point. Agreement is nothing but a consent of two parties on some matter. So when we have draft certain terms and conditions in writing and IT Act is specially giving protection to it, there is no question of further elaboration on that. Got that. Uh, another question. This this uh, question asked that uh, whether delayed payment provision under MSME Act 2006 are applicable in case an enterprise grow from small to medium. If an enterprise grow from small to medium, are delayed payment provisions applicable? Very good question asked, by part. There is a notification from the MSME Ministry which clearly states that. If some upward revision is there, upward revision means you become medium from micro or small, uh, medium from small, then all known tax benefit, I am not talking about tax benefit, all known tax benefit will be entitled for three years more from the date of such upward revision, meaning thereby it is a known tax benefit. Recovery benefit is not a tax benefit. It is a known tax benefit. So, ghabarane ki jirurut nahi medium bhi ban gai. Agar case koi pending bhi hai, to teen saal tak 
आप माइक्रो स्मॉल माने जाएंगे इस परपस में इट्स क्वाइट ग्रेट वेरी गुड क्वेश्चन वाज आस्क नेक्स्ट थिंग वन क्वेश्चन वाज आस्क दैट इफ इंटरेस्ट इज पेएबल बाय बायर टू सप्लायर एंड इफ अ स्मॉल एंड मीडियम एंटरप्राइज राइट्स अ लेटर he he doesn't want interest they have a good terms but that is delayed beyond 45 terms 45 days sorry so still there is a liability for that sir i have felt very strongly the law is law and law it has overriding effect on any other law for time being in force yes you cannot deny your liability by just making an agreement or just uh, drafting some sort of arrangement yes It is legal liability to pay. If something legal liability to pay, मान लो कि tax है आपने देना है आज नहीं दिया कल देना पड़ेगा कल नहीं दिया तो परसों देना पड़ेगा परसों नहीं दिया तो जब government survey करेगी तब देना पड़ेगा search करेगी तब देना पड़ेगा तो it is like same thing अगर आपने नहीं दिया और कभी भी जाग गया तो देना पड़ेगा भैया yes uh, one another question can MSI MSME enterprise claim for repayment of receivables for the period of 2011 with the interest which are still due to be received from purchaser jahan par still judicial proceedings have been initiated kya msme us case mein ja sakti hai file kar sakti hai i think this participant is asking about limitation act friends please note that there is a act called limitation act 1963 in india which talks that कि एवरी डेट बिकम ए टाइम बार डेट इफ इट इज नोट डिमांडेड फॉर थर्टी सिक्स मंथ मोर देन थर्टी सिक्स मंथ तो इफ यू आर टॉकिंग ऑफ ड्यू ऑफ टू थाउजेंड इलेवन एंड टू थाउजेंड ट्वेल्व इट इज टाइम बार्ड ऑन ए डेट इट इज ए टाइम बार्ड ऑन ए डेट एंड वेरी रिसेंटली इन लास्ट ईयर द सुप्रीम कोर्ट इज कम विद ए जजमेंट इन द केस ऑफ सिंपी इंडस्ट्री लिमिटेड विच वेरी क्लियरली स्टेट डेट लिमिटेशन लो इज एप्लीकेबल ऑन एम एस एम ई रिकवरी ड्यूज but but i am not going against the view of the uh, honorable supreme court but my opinion my view is little bit different there is another provision of limitation act 1963 under which we can take the remedy the another provision the another section of limitation act 1963 very clearly state that if we acknowledge the debts by doing something fresh limitation period start from the date of acknowledgement by showing the amount in the balance sheet what we are doing we are acknowledging the debts if we are acknowledging the debt a fresh period of 36 months starts from every balance it is my own interpretation yes that's a different perspective right got that uh, there was one more question but i did not get that question i'll ask whether the jurisdiction of state council can be extended to a district where no council is available i mean get aap samjhiye ki district wala provision to abhi aaya state to shuru se hi tha aisa nahi ho sakta ki state council na ho aisa ho sakta ki district council na ho to jab tak district council nahi hai aap state mein ja sakte hain state council to har state mein aapko milegi for the uh last question for the day uh, can you discuss more about ms this msme samadhan portal there were two three person wanted to know more about that for that i requested the uh, our committee msme start up committee of iisc to conduct part 2 of this program because it is a very lengthy yes. process where i give the practical demo how to file a case okay. in a practical manner I will give the demo of MSME Samadhan Portal website. How to file a complaint? How to check the status? How to reply to hearing date? As like in the same manner as we apply on the income tax website or whole income tax appeal or income tax appeal like that. So we will give the complete demo to the our viewers so that they can aware about this new opportunity. Okay, got that. Uh, one thing I wanted to discuss more. I think that was really relevant and something new. That objection point that you discussed. Let's highlight that again. That you discussed that it's not the date of invoice which matters. It's date of acceptance, right? Or deemed acceptance. And it doesn't matter. That objection does not has ki kitne din mein hoga. There's no days mentioned. So do you, lastly, do you want to have a summary on that? I think it was a great point. 
some were do joint late so what is relevant we have to calculate the period of 15 days or 16 days from the date of acceptance only yes so when invoice is way to ho sakta hai ki main goods mere ko pasand na hai wapas kar do pahunche na accident ho jaye quantity so date yeah. of invoice is not relevant yes date of receipt mere ko aate hue 7 din lag gaye to mere paas jab maal hi nahi aaya to to meri liability kab bani jab mere premises pe goods enter honge meri books mein enter hoga tabhi to meri liability banegi yes number 3 जब मैंने एक्सेप्टेंस करना था मैंने ऑब्जेक्शन रेस कर दिया और राइटिंग में कर दिया यस yes. और मेरे ऑब्जेक्शन रेस करने के बाद वो मेरी ऑब्जेक्शन दूर नहीं कर रहा तो मेरी लेबिलिटी कहा हुई मैंने तो उसके गुड्स एक्सेप्ट ही नहीं किए मेरी लेबिलिटी कब बननी है 45 दिन बाद बननी और वो पैंतालीस दिन का पीरियड कब से स्टार्ट होगा जिस दिन मैं कह दूंगा की जो गुड्स आपने भेजे थे वो मैंने एक्सेप्ट कर लिए नहीं करते ना करो uh one question i have received more there was this re- recent uh news uh cutting i've got they, that companies now have to report dealings with micro small enterprises by annually can you just put a highlight on this sir i i have discussed on same also there is a section 22 yes. section 22 of msm india which describe i think five six type of disclosure with regard to msd it yes. is not a new news cutting it is a law sills 2006 but we yes. are not complying on the same okay there are so many laws there are so many point which are is on the earth which is on the land but, <laughs> but we are not bothering about that it is yes. like one of such okay thank you so much for all this let's conclude the voting remarks so one and all all the audience present here or who would be seeing the session thank you for joining this session as we conclude this insightful session it's my privilege to extend my heartfelt gratitude to our distinct speakers here manoj lamba ji mr lamba ji's extensive knowledge and valuable insights has greatly enriched our understanding and your dedication to sir mentoring and guiding startups is really commendable thank you so much sir thank you a special thanks to all the participants and thank you sir for your precious time and expertise It means a lot Thank you, so thank, thank you everyone thank you manoj sir thank you divyam sir thank you thank you devang ji okay have a great time take care same to you